can to save a shape style on it. Are we good? Okay. Hi. <laughs> I don't know why I'm looking there. Um, well, thanks for coming here. Um, it's exciting to have our second edition of the um, speaker series in London. Um, and I'm very excited that Cole is here because obviously I this is one of the websites I use the most because I like to prove people wrong. And this is the website that helps me validate uh, my extreme very good memory. Um, so Cole is the founder and I don't know how many other roles he, ro he rolls in in Hi, hi. Um, in IMDb, um, which is the you know the Internet Movie Database, and is possibly one of the most popular websites that all people other than me visit because many people like to prove their friends wrong. Um, so it's very excited to have him here. So he will explain everything from the beginning, and I think that we are like origin stories. There's nothing better than a good origin story for Christmas. Um, so I'm very happy that these all two things are coming up together in the wrap for Christmas. And without further ado, I'm just going to introduce him because I just am running out of jokes. <laughs> um, so please, welcome, Cole Nidham. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and, uh, and welcome, welcome, all, welcome all around the world. Um, this, so I'm Cole Needham. I'm the founder and CEO of IMDb, um, and this is slightly unfair if you're watching remotely because somebody once told me that the best way to engage an audience is to bribe them <laughs> with an Amazon gift certificate. Other bribes are acceptable, but in my case, I'm going to bribe some lucky member of the London audience with a gift certificate. So uh, the way this is going to work, hands up only, no shouting out. I know this is going to be hard for some of you, so do not shout the answer out. If you shout the answer out, it's in ineligible. Um, I would like to know what the following movies have in common. Okay, so the first movie I'm going to mention is The Amazing Spider-Man. No one's going to take a blind guess on this, right? Okay. Zombieland. No, you, Debs, you don't. You can't. My, my, my executive assistant is not allowed to answer this question. Easy A. Crazy Stupid Love. All right, if it doesn't go on the next one, you're in serious trouble. It, you, you, you put your hand up, so say. Emma Stone, £25 of gift certificate goodness heading to you. There you go. All right. My next, uh, my next uh, movie was going to be La La Land. So if you really, if you didn't get that, uh, there would be trouble. Um, so uh, before I give you a history of IMDb, it would be nice to know where we are today. And to find out where we are today, I have some celebrity friends on a marketing sizzle reel. So if we could play our three-minute sizzle reel now. The funny thing is I used to be a casting assistant. So 90% of my day was spent on IMDb. I use it every day, literally every day. I mean, I'm my production company, like constantly looking stuff up, how to get in touch with people, where people are represented. If I'm ever having a conversation about who was that guy in that film and who was it, and I'm IMDb. I'm check IMDb all the time. No, I'm addicted. You're addicted? I swear to you, 20 times a day. I love IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> Say, well, you, you met such and such. You such and such. Being like, what? What's it? But you know, you know the guy I'm talking about. I have the app for IMDb. I look it up. So I'm like, oh yeah, I know what you mean. I'm like, all oh, right, that person. You know. That's when you need IMDb. I actually am an IMDb Pro user. That's right, 
Pro. I'm an IMDB Pro member. I'm a subscriber to IMDB Pro. It's, you know, I read the news. I like to see what's going on, and I, IMDB always lets you know what, what's being, what's going on in the film community. I use it a lot. I'm, I mean, I, I and, and not just to check myself. You can just look up anybody, and it's it's really remarkable. And I don't even remember how you would do that before IMDb. It's been so so much part of the Hollywood culture for so long. industry staple, isn't it, IMDb? How did we cope without it? Did we cope without it? Was there a time before IMDb? I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Or as we like to call it, I am the bomb. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Thank you, George Clooney. There you go. Who, who would ever have thought that one day I'd be able to say thank you, George Clooney. Um, so, so there you go. Um, so um, because, of the, because of the audience today, I thought I would kind of focus a lot more on some of the earlier days of IMDb and kind of those early pre-web days and, and things like that. So, um, uh, so we, will, we will go with that. So uh, Russell... Brand said there, was there a time before IMDb? And there was a time before IMDb when little five-year-old me uh, was staying at his grandmother's house one day. And, uh, and she said, would you like to enter a colouring competition and you can win a prize? Now, I don't know if five-year-old me understood what a colouring competition was, but, but, but the, the, the aim of the game was it was the local newspaper. There was a scene from uh, Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and you had to colour colour it all in kind of thing. And the prize was two tickets to go and see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was a re-release. I'm not quite that old. Um, and and, and I, 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 I diligently did what my grandmother what my grandmother asked. Um, all right, okay, welcome. Back. Hey, this is a talk about the movies, so we should. Yeah, that's 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 great. I can I can do this. It's very reminiscent of my first time at the movies. In fact, there we go. The the house lights, the house lights went down at exactly the right moment. We rehearsed that, didn't we? Um, so <laughs> so uh, so I entered this coloring competition and won. And so I, I remember going to the big city to go see, go see Snow White. And, and I fell in love with cinema. And maybe I fell in love a little bit with Snow White. Um, and, and, you know, that, that, that kind of changed my life. Now, the, the rest of this talk will be in strictly chronolo chronological order. However... I'll just leap forward a few few years, just just for a minute, because about 15 years ago, I was talking to my grandmother um, and uh, about IMDb, and and I said uh, I said, well, it's all it's all a result of the coloring competition that I won, and and she looked at me, and she said, oh, I have a terrible confession, and I'm like, you know, what 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 what, and and she said she said, well. After you went to bed that night, I couldn't help but colour in all the bits that you missed and go over the things that were in the, the wrong colour. And, and so, so, so kind of like, for those of you who've seen the, the movie Fight Club, the bit where Ed Norton's character finds out what's going on, I've lived that moment in, in real life because my everything, my love of film, my career, uh, you know, IMDb, everything that, everything that I do, the reason I'm even here today is all due to a fraudulent colouring competition entry by an overzealous grandmother. 
couldn't help but ensure that her her grandson won the big trip to the cinema. So so there you go. So my my love of cinema it's all it's all based on uh, on, on a fraud. But there we go. Um, so I'm uh, so so that that was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, I was the wrong age to be taken to see Jaws, and I begged my mother to take me see see Jaws when I was nine years old. Um, that showed me the power of film to kind of like get in your head and, and mess with your thinking because I became scared of sharks. I became, there were, there were no sharks, as we know. Uh, people watching in California maybe slightly have to worry about sharks sometimes. Um, you don't have to worry about sharks in the UK. You certainly don't have to worry about sharks in the local swimming pool. But every time I went swimming, I would always like casually, no, there are no sharks in. It's okay to go swimming. So thank you, Steven Spielberg, for that one. Um, I'm the right age for the first Star Wars movie, and I bought all the merchandise. And, you know, I even had the Darth Vader bubble bath. Um, great, great to have a bath with a Darth Vader, Darth Vader bubble bath. Um, so, so kind of like growing up in the 70s, kind of like obsessed with, with film. When? In 1979, as a 12-year-old, for Christmas, what an appropriate time. It's come, come, gosh, that's coming, that's coming up on 40 years, isn't it, in a couple of years' time. Oh, gosh, I'm suddenly feeling extra old. Um, so I'll only be doing this talk for two more years. <laughs> then, then, uh, no. um, so I received, for a Christmas present, my first home computer at the beginning of the home computer revolution in the UK. This was a build-it-yourself kit. So it came with the chips and the circuit board, and you had to solder the chips you know, onto, onto the board. It had a calculator display and 128 bytes of memory. 128 bytes. That, that is not enough for a whole tweet. And now they've doubled the tweet size. It's even, you know, it's an even smaller percentage uh, of a tweet. This, th this, this phone here has 256 gig of memory, and my first computer had 128 bytes of memory. But um, that began my interest in technology. So there I am, interested in film, interested in technology. The home video revolution was going on at the same time here. VHS tapes, <laughs> remember those? Uh, VHS tapes absolutely everywhere. And so I found myself seeing more films than I'd ever seen before. And I found myself starting to lose track of which films I had seen and which ones I hadn't seen. So the classic film geek thing to do is get a paper diary and start to write down the date you, you saw the film. And I did that for two weeks. And then I thought, I could create a database. So keyboard skills. Oh, by now, this was 1981. So my home computer had 48K of memory and a cassette interface so you could save the data to a, to a cassette. It's getting to the point where people go, what's a cassette? You know, you know but cassette interface, save the data. So, so, so I started to put my film diary in this little database. Um, and I would, if I saw a film on VHS tape, I would rewind the tape. And then I would press play again, and I would type in the director, the main cast, the producers, the main main crew, and 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 there it was, all in this little homebrew database um, that that I'd written myself in um, Z80 assembler language for those of you who are, who are technically minded. Um, so 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 there 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 I was with this. It's you know I could do things like I could run a report that said you know how many. How many Alfred Hitchcock films have I seen that star Cary Grant? You know, uh, four, by the way. Um, so, so you know, just 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 for my own, just for my own use, a little bit geeky, but it worked out all right in the end. Um, my as 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 a fourteen year old, my mother would sometimes come into my bedroom and she'd go, "Why don't you go outside and play?" I'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm just finishing. I'm just typing in some more credits or I'm just adding a new field or a new report to the database and, and everything like that. And, it, you know, it, it, was, it worked out. It worked out OK. Um, so 1981, kind of like, you know, uh, 82, 83, 84. I got my first email address in 1985. 
So I have been online for 32 years, uh, 32 years. Um, and I then started to meet, that's electronically, <laughs> uh, interact with other film fans from around the world. And so there I was kind of like, uh, kind of like into sort of like late, late, late 1980s. And I found myself online in uh, a Usenet. Usenet, anybody? Yo, oh, some, hey, oh, great stuff. Okay, let's get, Usenet is going the same way as cassettes, by the way. So, <laughs> so Usenet news group, it's kind of like a text-based discussion group, uh, distributed around the world. You'd post a message into uh, each group was themed on different things. And naturally, I was in the film discussion group. Um, you would post a message, a question or you, a mini review or something like that. And two days later, your message will have made it all the way around the world. And two days later, someone would reply. And, you know, it led for it led to some of the world's most interesting time shifted conversations ever because you always thought you were replying to somebody immediately but there was a two-day lag almost on on everything kind of crazy crazy kind of crazy kind of early days when late 1980s in this group rec.arts.movies was the name of the the usenet group um and it's it's interesting because here are some facts. This is this, this is a fact-based section. Well, it's all fact-based, actually, but, but this is especially... I want to stress the factual nature of the following bit of the talk because it, it goes slightly weird for a bit, but bear with me and all will, all will come back to land. Okay. The facts are the people in this group were mostly US male... <laughs> college students. And what do US male college students like to discuss in a film discussion group? But who is the attractive actress and what films has she appeared in already? So slightly, you know, not, not, not slightly politically incorrect here for a minute, but bear with me because it'll all, it will all turn out okay. So one of the people in the group began a frequently asked questions list of actresses and the films in which they had appeared. So um, I grabbed a copy of an early version of this list and I thought, hmm, this, 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 this has potential. So uh, I imported it into a, a separate table within my database, which had now got a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, I think by, I guess by 1988, 89, I was on Borland Paradox as a database. Oh, I see some, I see some embarrassed nods here. Yay. Yay for ball and paradox. Um, so, um, so, so I could, I could, what I could do was immediately give the maintainer of this frequently asked questions list, all of the actresses in all of the films that I had seen. And then from that point onwards, if ever I saw a film and there were any actresses in it, which usually there are, um, I didn't have to type their names in. I could pull them in from this other table within my, within my whole database system. But there were two problems with this. Uh, one, it was ridiculously sexist. Uh, and two, uh, it was only useful for actress credits. And I had a database with actors, uh, cinematographers, directors, writers, producers, et cetera, et cetera. So the reason I can tell this bit of the story is, which is okay, is that in August of 1990, I launched the actors list, <laughs> which then redressed the political incorrectness of this whole thing and posted into Rec That Aren't Stop Movies the very first version of the actors list. And the scary thing is, if, you, if the, the, um, the interface to Usenet that people use most often these days is Google Groups, and you can go to Google Groups, and I think you can find the very first version of the actors list uh, today. It's kind of, it's, it's a little bit scary because people say, well, young people today, their entire life is, will be online in the future. And I am 50 years old, and my entire life is already online going all the way back to when I was 21. Um, so, um, so, so anyway, so I, I posted a, a, an actors, a list of actors credits and people started to mail me missing actors credits that I, that I did not, that I did not have. And it was kind of like, this is absolutely 
fabulous. This has worked way better than, than I thought it could work. Um, a little bit of a problem, though. I'm a classic film fan, and a lot of my favorite actors, actresses are no longer with us. And, and the actresses list was only for actresses who were alive. And I'd kind of copied that, you know, for compatibility. I'd copied my actor's file was only for actors who were still alive. So I found myself having to launch the dead list. This was a list of dead people and all of their film credits. OK, so and, and for, for, a for a little while, it was it was a little bit sad because if an actor or actress passed away, their their credits would have to move from one file to the next file in a kind of heavenly kind of transition sort of thing. But but there we go. So we had actresses, we had dead people, uh, actors and then we had dead people um, when somebody mailed mailed me and said wow these files are like really really great but you should publish a director's file because i'm a big fan of directors and they'd be great if you you managed a director's file and i was i was kind of busy with actors and dead and the actresses guy was only ever interested in the actresses to be honest uh, so 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 i mailed the person who mailed me back and i said well how about why don't you join our little volunteer team and you could manage the director's file i'll give you a list of all the directors of all the films that i've seen i'll give you some software to manage the incoming data and then some software to publish a new version of the list out and he mailed back and said yes so about a month later september 1990 um, somebody in the group said well these files are really great but what we could do with is a database so that we could search them and i kind of thought ah i could i could take a bit of the software i've got for my own use i could take a bit of the software that i wrote to publish the files i could kind of by the way this is a terrible description of the software development process as any software engineers in the audience are probably going i could stir it all together <laughs> sprinkle some magic software dust into this and and i came up with the very first version of the IMDb software. Uh, it was uh, published to Rec That Art Stop Movies on the 17th of October, 1990. A collection of Unix shell scripts. So, Orc, Sed, Grep, all kind of bundled together into something that would allow you to download the files onto your own machine, have a command line interface, and you could do very basic searches of who directed and who was who who was in a set of movies we were live there is no world wide web there is no commercial use of the internet it's just a volunteer kind of hobby project a couple of weeks later somebody mailed me and said i'm a big fan of writers you can imagine how that conversation went and we added a writer section a few weeks later somebody in switzerland mailed me and said i'm a big fan of composers you can imagine how that happened. The guy in Switzerland also had his own composer's credits because he collected soundtrack CDs. So he stood in his bit with the, you know, with the, with the composer's credits um, and so on and so on. And, and at that point, by the end of 1990, we had 10,000 uh, films in the, in the database. And we'd only really been running since, since October. Um, your average printed guidebook to film and television would have 20,000 titles in it and it'd be about that fat and it would be the, the the funny thing is every year when new films came out they'd have to find about 300 films to throw out of the previous edition so that they could maintain the binding because it was about as fat as you could publish a mass market paperback book and i i remember saying to my wife i said with 10,000 films, we're halfway there. You know, yay, just another 10,000, and the, the, the database project will be complete. That was 1990. Last year, 2016, IMDb added more than a third of a million titles to the database. So my, my, little, my little idea of finishing all of this by Easter <laughs> 1991 when, you know, went a little bit out of, out of the window. And the scary thing is, with a, even with a third of a million titles, I don't know if we're gaining 
on the number of titles that are produced and released each year because uh, storytelling they can that you you can make a you can make a film on an iPhone. You can edit it on an iPhone. You can upload it into the public internet. And people can watch it. It can be picked for a film festival and shown to an audience or, or broadcast on any number of platforms. So the rate at which storytellers can engage with their audiences is only only growing. So it's kind of it's kind of fun that we added a third of a million titles um, last year. And I've got I've got an awful feeling we're gonna have added more than a third of a million this year. So you know so I'm I yeah I must get I must get just get into the time where we need the numbers isn't it? Um, so anyway, 1990, 1991. Oh, we got, I'll do this because this is more technical audience. We got our own FTP site in 1991. Um, so that meant that you didn't have to wait for all of the pieces of the database to be posted into the group. You could go to an FTP server and grab all of the database in in one go kind of thing. So so swim run it everything going along nicely. Every now and again somebody would pop up and go, "Oh, um, I love this database. Um, it needs X whatever X is and you know sometimes we soon exhausted the things that were in my database. So, you know, we I think we launched the genres list with two genres. We launched the quotes list with five movie quotes. Uh, we launched the biography list with two biographies. But as soon as we launched them, the community responded, started to contribute. And of course, the, the days of it taking two days for people to respond were soon a thing of the past. And the, the data was, was pouring in. Um, every now and again, somebody would come up and say, oh, I've got, a, I've got access to this kind of computer or this kind of service. Let's add this as a way you can access the data. So we've always been about collecting the largest amount of entertainment related information that helps people make viewing decisions and then making it available on the largest number of platforms. So, you know, these days, obviously, mobile devices. Um, one day, the IMDb glasses app, maybe. <laughs> uh, you know, away, away, away we go, kind of thing. That's going to be, you know, that's 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 going to be uh, that that that's going to be my dream. Certainly for wandering around film industry events when it can remind you who somebody is without, you know, without without you having without you having to do the Hugh Jackman kind of. Oh yeah, there you you're that person. Um, so um, so adding all of these different interfaces. When uh, one day in I guess the beginning of the summer of 1993, I got an email from um, a PhD computer science student at Cardiff University in Wales. So I, I live in Bristol, so kind of 40 miles away. There we were, this worldwide effort. Uh, a guy called Rob Hartill mailed me, and uh, Rob's email goes something like this. Hi, Col. Um, just installed the movie database software. I think it's really good. Um, but have you heard of this World Wide Web thing? Because I think it might be quite big. Would love to write a wrapper around the, write a wrapper around the software. And we could do like a website interface at Cardiff University. I've spoken to the professors and they say that, you know, that's OK. Because basically we're, we, we could use the spare capacity at Cardiff University. Now, given that the web was in its infancy, Mosaic was still in beta. I think, I think that's right. I, I, I did have a copy of Mosaic, so thank you, ancestor of Firefox. Uh, um, and, um, and so I had heard of the World Wide Web, though, because in addition to having Mosaic, the, the person in the next office to me at work had written their own web browser. Written their own web browser. Because um, that's what you could do in those days. You know, you, you, could, you could go for the Mosaic beta. Um, you could go to an FTP server in Switzerland and download some other web browser. Um, or you could read the HTML spec, all eight tags. I'm making that up. It was probably more than eight. But, you know, you could read the description of HTTP. Oh, that looks simple enough. And brew your own web browser in an afternoon. So I distinctly remember the first thing I ever saw on the web was a, a weather map of San Francisco Bay with the, with the Golden Gate Bridge enshrouded in fog. 
uh, and it was kind of taken four hours ago. And a bunch of us all around this, all around this computer in 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 this 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 person's office, going, "Wow." So that's like only four hours ago, and and we can we can we can see like the Golden Gate Bridge is covered in fog. Uh, I presume the Golden Gate Bridge is covered in fog right now. You know, I mean, it could have been you know that could have been a photo from weeks ago, but you know it was freshly taken four four hours ago. So anyway. Uh, a few weeks later, Rob mails me back and he goes, the website just launched an hour ago and we've had 60 hits. And it was like, 60 hits? Whoa! You know, this is way the big, the big time has arrived kind of thing. And, and, and you know, because it was the first time we got real-time feedback on the fact that people were using IMDb. So that was, that was fabulous. We also... We also got listed on the NCSA's What's New on the Web page, which would list every website that went live the previous day, all four of them. So we were we got a listing on there, and you know people would say to me, they say, so like, are you on the web? Have you been on the web? And I'd go, oh yeah, 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 I've I've done the web, you know, meaning I pretty much visited every website that existed as long as you as long as you didn't count the theoretical physics websites. I had been on every website, and we were we were kind of one of the first 100 websites to 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 really launch. Um, but spare capacity, Cardiff University. Um, Completely still volunteer, still university, on the university server. Filled up all the space there. Um, so I had to put a call on the bottom of the website going, would any other university like a copy of the, uh, well, we weren't IMDB back in those days, but would anybody like her to host a copy of the database? Um, we got answers back from that. And so pretty soon we were in um, the US, Germany, um, South Korea, Japan, um, Italy, um, Australia, and Iceland. I have no, I, it's, it's great. I, like, there can't have been more than 14 people online in Iceland in 1994, but they had their own copy of the IMDb database. So, you know, there, there, there we were with that. And, uh, and we got, uh, how much, how's, how's time? Oh, gosh. All oh, right. Okay. I need to speed this up because I'm still in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Um, so, uh, so there, there, there we were when we entered 1995, and the web seemed to really catch on. For for my UK audience here, the BBC started to do shows about getting online. There were magazines. You could go to a book bookshop and buy a book, a printed guidebook to what was available on the web. Um, and we suddenly found that our traffic in a two-week period doubled. And then two weeks after that, it doubled again. And then two weeks after that, it doubled again. Two weeks after that, it doubled again. Now, luckily, it didn't double every two weeks since 1995, else we'd be bigger than the known universe by now. But uh, how about that for a goal? Uh, <laughs> um, but, but growing and growing and growing. And our volunteer hobby project was getting difficult to do as a volunteer hobby project. And so we thought, what can we do? Um, cause it was, it was just getting unmanageable and, and, and it was, it's kind of, it's, a, it's difficult to kind of explain the context in kind of 2017, you know, back, back at the height of the dot com boom, if you'd been online for five minutes and hadn't incorporated and had an IPO and, and all of that kind of thing, you were considered slow, but, but you could count the number of websites that were ad supported on two hands. You had no idea if anybody was actually making any money or not, and no idea if there was any kind of long-term viable business model. So lots of services in 1995 kind of closed down under the collapsing weight of, of volume. Um, on the other hand, some of them went on, and we were one of those those lucky ones. And so so we we kind of struggled thinking about, well, what will the community think about us incorporating? And, you know, like we remember um, Yahoo, which had been based at Stanford, had, you know, incorporated and, um, you know, and, and there was there was all of that kind of kind of issues about how what would what would people think? Um, we agonized about it, but we decided that we would incorporate. Um, we figured out a way to divide the shares amongst the 20 volunteers spread throughout the world 
um, on, a, on a fair basis that worked on how long you'd been involved and how much work you were doing. So some people had been casually involved for many years. Some people had just joined but were kind of taking on as much as they possibly could. And there's an MBA case study in this somewhere because 20 people who'd never met agreed on a, a fair allocation of shares amongst the team, which is like pretty crazy. I, I think secretly, nobody thought the shares would be worth anything. So why even bother haggling over half a percent or whatever? Um, in order, in order to kind of like, kind of satisfy our minds a little bit as well, um, we we gave uh, shares to our top twenty data contributors as well. So you know, so so when we incorporated, there were kind of forty people spread throughout the world. Um, we incorporated in the UK. Uh, with me as a managing director, CEO, three other directors in the UK, the very first time that the four directors ever met was in our lawyer's office in Covent Garden to sign the incorporation papers. We met in reception, went upstairs, signed the paperwork, and IMDB, Internet Movie Database Limited, was born. Um, we did the classic startup thing. Uh, we bought our first web server on a credit card. Uh, um, we, uh, one of our guys in Wisconsin, a guy called Ron, uh, he went to his local internet service provider and asked them if they would host a copy of IMDb in their machine room in exchange for some free promotion on the homepage. They agreed. Over in the UK, we, we got a hard disk. We got a four gigabyte hard disk remember, four gigabyte hard disk, biggest thing you could buy, I think, in like 1996, um, with, um, with uh, we put the operating system, the web server, Apache, uh, was it Apache? Yeah. Well, well anyway, the web server, uh, okay, well, I'm a bit hazy on that. The, whatever the web server software was, um, the, all of the IMDB software and all of the IMDB data on a four gigabyte hard disk and we FedExed it to Wisconsin, plugged it into the machine over there, made some DNS changes in the UK, and imdb.com was launched a few weeks before the Oscars in 1996. Um, a couple of weeks later, I was on the phone to our first ad client. I had never sold any advertising before, and they had never bought any advertising before, so on the phone, it's kind of like, yeah. So, so how much is it for a month? Um, and Um, and I, so I, I name an amount, and they go, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. I was kind of like, Whoa. yep, yes, oh, of course, yes, 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 right, yes, we can organise that straight away. Uh, Bing, you know, yay! Uh, <laughs> um, it it was enough to pay back the credit card before it was due because you got four. Oh, there you go. That's my. I'm, I'm going to bring this into land in a few more minutes. Okay. Um, so, so, so uh, we paid off the credit card before it was due, and thus became the world's first profitable internet company. <laughs> probably not strict. Probably not strictly true. And actually, right here is the wrong place to make that claim. But, uh, <laughs> but there you go. You know, I've, I've over romanticised that bit of the past a little bit. But there we were. We were a profitable internet company. We immediately took the extra money to uh, triple our server fleet, um, and uh, and and so away we went. Um, a couple of months later. We sold our first piece of advertising to a film studio, to 20th Century Fox, for Independence Day, the movie, and Independence Day, the weekend. Um, I got to meet Will Smith for the first time at Cannes uh, in, in May, uh, and got to tell him a little bit of this story. And it was kind of like, you know, so Will, you, you played a part in the, in the founding of IMDb, um, because selling advertising to a studio was my cue to give up my day job. I became our first employee. And then from that point onwards, as the revenue run rate grew, and we could afford another salary, I would ring one of the volunteer shareholders. We were kind of running a little list on who was crazy enough to quit next. I would ring someone up and say, OK, we've got enough money to hire you now so you can give in your notice. And they would like join the, join the team. That was going along very, 
very, very nicely. Um, when? Oh, my goodness. 20 years. Oh, this is the first time I've done this. 20 years ago this month, 20 years ago this month, I checked my mail one day and there was a, an email from a guy called Alan Kaplan. Uh, Alan's job title was general counsel. Uh, the company for which he worked was a small Seattle-based online bookseller called Amazon.com. And Alan's email went something like this. Hi, Cole. Uh, Jeff Bezos and I were discussing movie websites the other day when naturally IMDb came up in the conversation. Jeff and I will be in the UK in January and we would love to meet to discuss some business ideas. OK, now, I know it like, you know, you're, you've got a small startup company, you get an email like that today, you would be immediately, even before the meeting, you would be like cracking open the champagne, you would be down the nearest Tesla dealership, uh, you know, you know what, what, whatever, whatever, is, whatever is your thing, you'll be doing that. But you have to remember, this is December 1997, Amazon.com is an online bookseller. Uh, they've never purchased, never acquired a company before. Um, they've only been a publicly traded company for seven months. Um, and so we thought we were just having a business meeting about our, an ad deal. So I went along to this meeting with, with one of my co-directors and Alan and Jeff were there. Uh, not, not, not ridiculously far from here, actually. Um, and, and Jeff, you know, asked for a history of IMDb and then gave me a little bit of a history of Amazon. And then he said, so... I expect you want to know why we called this meeting. And, and I said, well, is it to talk about our advertising deal? Uh, and, and, and Jeff looked at Alan and he went, are we advertising with these guys? <laughs> and then gave us a, a Jeff trademark laugh. And it's kind of like, oh, uh, this, isn't about the ad, this isn't about an ad deal then. And Jeff explained how Amazon.com would be going from selling books to music and then opening a video store, selling VHS tapes and these shiny new round things called DVDs and was looking for a site to partner with. That partnership could be anything from a licensing deal all the way through to an acquisition. And Jeff had such a clear picture of how IMDb could sit within the bigger Amazon.com family uh, that, that we found ourselves agreeing in principle um, that we should, you know, take things to the next stage of the relationship kind of thing. A, a couple of us went out to Seattle and we met the team there. Um, lots of negotiations with lawyers over in the UK and, and whatever. Uh, and on the 24th of April, 1998, um, IMDb became a wholly owned subsidiary of Amazon.com. We were the first company that Amazon acquired. Um, they acquired three companies on the same day. Um, uh, a UK bookseller called bookpages.co.uk, which became Amazon.co.uk. A German bookseller called telebook.de, which became Amazon.de. And imdb.com, which remains imdb.com. And the media were kind of like, well, we get those two acquisitions, but what what's Amazon doing with a, with a movie database? Uh, this, this, is so, this is so kind of strange. Um, and then, then later in the year, the video store launched and people were like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, then a few years later, uh, Amazon launched downloadable digital movies before you could stream them in real time. Um, and people went, oh, that makes a lot more sense. Um, then Amazon Video launched and people went, ah, Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Then Prime Video launched, and then Amazon Studios launched. Um, and then, it, you know, it, it, each one of these launches, we've been able to build upon the things that Amazon has built to help make IMDb better. So we're on Kindle Fire tablets. Um, we're on the Fire TV interface. Um, we 
now help power some of the Alexa entertainment queries. Um, if you ask for show times, if you have the new Amazon show device, uh, Echo show device, when you ask it to play a trailer, it plays from IMDb and, and so on. And so we've been growing and thriving within the Amazon environment ever since. They, obviously, they kept me on to run it. They hired all of our other volunteer shareholders. Um, and there are still, after, after 20 years, there are still five of us that are still left. And we're like, we're like employee in terms of longevity. We're employees like 34 to 39 in the Amazon longevity kind of list. Um, and, and here I am today talking to, to you guys, and it's kind of grown and developed. Um, we, we obviously, we launched a mobile app several years ago. When are we? Tuesday. Yesterday, we launched IMDb Pro's mobile app, um, so uh, for, for the first time. Um, and yeah, every day we're, we're continuing to do better and better things and, and helping people access uh, movie and TV information wherever they happen to be. So there you go. That, I'll leave it kind of there so we can go into question mode so that you don't get... There's another... Scarily, there's another 20 years of history there, isn't there, between 1998 and 2018. Questions? Questions? I have a microphone for questions. Or, uh, oh, we don't have the catch box because it yeah, ran out of juice. Yeah, ran out of battery. So See, all of, this be technology, like all of this technology <laughs> that we have, and we're all prisoners of battery-powered microphones. Okay, go, go, go. Um, so why did IMDb never become Amazon Movie Database like the other two, do you reckon? <laughs> Um, well, it, it's it's funny. So 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 this this is a, and thank you, Jeff. Most of all, thank you, Jeff. Um, I, I can't. I, I, the, the, those those were those words. I think them so many times each day. Um, when when we explained how IMDb worked and like we were we were in, there were twenty of us and we're in all of these different countries. Jeff kind of said he said I have no idea how this works, but I can see that it does because I see imdb.com, I see what the website does and how you're bringing it, you know, it's customer focus and you're bringing it constantly making improvements to it. So, so it's kind of, it feels very Amazonian for something that's not ours yet. <laughs> um, so we are going to be fairly hands off because, because I, you know, Jeff said he's, he's literally scared of breaking it because the, you know, because it, it seems such a, a, a magical thing and, and they've, you know, in those early years, we 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 kind of gained trust. Um, a, a good tip uh, for for those of you, for those of you with a, a kind of like a career path that might involve building a company and and selling it onwards. Um, one of the things that that really really helped us. One of our original uh, people involved, who still works for IMDb to this very day, volunteered to move to Seattle and be an ambassador kind of between IMDb and Amazon in those early days. And it was great because they could see somebody that represented IMDb and they were kind of like, can IMDb do this? Could we do this? How about doing this? And, and you know, he would kind of like relay it back to the team and we'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, sometimes it was yes and sometimes it was hell no. <laughs> um, and, and equally, he could represent IMDb to Amazon. And then we, we gradually, because of that trusting relationship in the early days, it was then like, well, OK, we, we, we kind of trust you to, to get on with things. And so, so although we work very closely with our fellow Amazonians um, and we're, you know, we're in Amazon offices, I'm still the, the head of the original company that we incorporated in January of 1996, um, still. And, and it's so funny, I still have to have a board meeting every year to like approve the, your Deb's notes. Yeah, yeah, February. Yeah, our next board meeting's in February. So it's kind of, it's, it's, worked, it's worked, well as a, worked well as a model. And there are other... Amazon acquisitions that have gone that way as well. And every now and again, you know, they'll like, you know, I'll speak to a, a, a CEO or a board of a company that might be being acquired. And, and it's kind of like reassuring, oh, you're, you're still there. Although to be honest, 
I've now been there 20, I'll be there 20 years in April. So, you know, maybe people are like, oh, I'm not sure I want to be acquired and still be there in 20 years, but it shows that you can be. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. And um, what tips would you give to people who are thinking about setting up their own company? Right. So my, I think, and and I, I know that I know this is a this this is kind of like this ends up being a common thing, but it's it's so core and so fundamental. Um, so to be passionate about what you do and why you're doing it. Um, there are there there are, there are and you know I've given you kind of like the the lovely romanticized kind of all the positive things. I haven't dwelt on some of the you know some of the difficult times that that we had along the way. But during those difficult times, the the thing that kind of keeps you going is that is that passion, and it's kind of like you know that that why am I doing this? And then it's, you know you might cry out to yourself like actually audibly, and then the, the little voice in in the back of your head will go because you care about this so much and it's like damn it i do care about this so much okay back to work again <laughs> kind of thing so it really you know that that's the that 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 is the that is the thing for me that, that that's that's true and I, I know you know other people say that i i i i genuinely mean that and after 27 years hopefully i'm i'm a walking demonstration of that more than perhaps someone who founded the company last week and said be passionate about it <laughs> okay, we have two interesting questions. Um, the oh, first one... not, not that your question wasn't interesting. There you <laughs> go. Two more. I'm so sorry. I meant two interesting questions. In, in two this... more interesting questions. Nowhere near as good as yours. But... <laughs> no, I will admit. <laughs> sorry. I'm pretty really sorry. sorry. I'm apologizing. Um, um, we need to uh, get to your question as well. <laughs> But, is there another question? Yeah, there is, but but we'll oh, let, let's let's okay, balance let's, let's them have out. one of yeah, these. Yeah, yeah. Um, the question is: You said you thought negotiation for shares went very smoothly because nobody believed they would <laughs> worth they would be worth anything. Do you think this kind of transition from community run to commercial for can still work today? Um, I think it can. I think it can still work. It's 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 hard. It was easier back then. Because there was, because really, when we, we began, there was no commercial use of the internet. No, I mean, it was actually forbidden to use the internet for commercial purposes. So the people with whom you were working, you knew they were, you know, they they weren't secretly, you know, waiting to pounce or do a secret deal or, you know, all, all of that kind of thing. So so we kind of built we built this trust up, so it was easier back then to do that but i'm a i'm i'm a i'm a real believer in you know pe people you know people are, are you know are fundamentally the same throughout the world and and i don't think anything's changed in anybody's dna in 20 years that, that's turned us all into selfish people and whatever so if you find the right community and you're doing it for the right reasons then then i absolutely think that that it's possible today it, you know in some ways it's easier um, you know, because 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 of things. I mean, yeah, because of because of the things that you you can spin up without needing massive. You can still spin up massive websites and massive mobile apps and use amazing kinds of infrastructure. There are there are all kinds of companies providing that service. I know one. <laughs> um, so in some ways, that kind of element of it is easier to kind of test the waters as you you know when 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 you when you uh, when you begin, but. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's different, easier yet harder. <laughs> the other question, which was oh yeah, aha, there we go. Yeah, back to you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for sharing your story. Um, thank you. <laughs> two questions. Um, first of all, who who are the major curators of of the database now? Is it still based on a community? Or yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we still there is still an edit page button at the bottom of pretty much every uh, every page on the website. Um, there are more links in the mobile app by the by the month. We're gradually we we collect more and more of the data mobile because we're finding you know when when you you know when you're out and about and whatever and, and watching things. Um, so so we, we actually, our contributor base is growing. 
still. Um, it's in the several hundreds of thousands of people send information to IMDb every year. Um, we process just under a million updates per week. Uh, so we, we, we're heading towards that magic million updates to the, the database a week. And that doesn't include... That doesn't include things like the votes. You know that that, that these are actual new bits of information: director credits, catering credits, trivia points, reviews, um, whatever. Um, so that mix has a large number of people within the film and TV industry up updating either their own credits, uh, updating the credits of their clients, or updating the credits of a film or TV show that they might be working on. So we do get a lot of the information from direct from the source. But equally, there's, a, there's, there's still a great deal of it that comes from people who kind of like, oh, I saw a show last night i you know I, I watched a show on the streaming service last night and there's a credit missing on imdb bing off it goes and that that comes through to our team in bristol here in the uk um, is the team that manages all of that data coming in um, so yeah so still built by the community and sorry, follow on to that before the yeah, same question. Um, of course. For, so, so for people who aren't in the film industry, yep. what do you think incentivizes them to to give you that content? I think it's it's a uh, so so one of one of the wonderful things about about film and television and the world of entertainment generally is, you know, you you discover you discover a, a wonderful short filmmaker and they've they've made a great short film and you love that short film and you kind of like you want to go well I want people to be able to find out information about that film and so so it's kind of like they'll fill in the they'll help fill in the gaps so that it makes it then easier so there's that there's that love and passion for sharing your knowledge i know something that imdb even though it's very large doesn't know so i'm going to help the community of imdb users access that data by contributing it myself and I you know I I do this myself on you know on on other you know on other services it's the it's that little thing that you you never know whether you know that little restaurant review or that little correction to the opening times or the little shift of the address a couple of doors down so people can find the restaurant or whatever will uh, will enable someone to you know get something good out of a tiny change that you made and when you when you have hundreds of thousands of people doing that adding up to nearly a million corrections or updates a week it, it creates something that that is truly i mean it's it's genuinely magical and i i often pinch myself am i in some kind of dreamy alternate reality kind of thing i may i may be in some dreamy alternate reality but i'm enjoying my time in this alternate dreamy reality where where people send us lovely bits of info and it makes imdb better every day <laughs> I'm really sorry, just a very quick last one. Um, oh, well. if, sorry. Um, <laughs> if, if IMDb was to launch today, do you think it would still have launched along the same lines with a community just volunteering to give that information? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are. There, there, it, it's it's kind of it's it's kind of interesting because I think you know there, there's a need for but film entertainment. So the the world of entertainment, let's call it. It it has some interesting characteristics in the almost everybody consumes it in some way you it's very rare you meet somebody who goes i never watch tv i never watch film you know i never engage it so 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 that it's kind of like it's something that connects us all together okay but yet the people who work on these different uh, films and shows they kind of they arrive together for a production they make it and then they move on and then they meet. And so, so the, the, the space is full of people whose careers you can kind of track and you can kind of go, oh, wow, she's a great writer. I want to I wanna see more films she's written or more shows she's made. And, you know, that, that, that kind of, that kind of un, unique kind of characteristics. If you, if you look at the music industry, 
you know, people are in bands or they're, they're solo artists. Or, oh, well, obviously, occasionally bands break into solo artists. But, you know, people kind of stick together more and you, you can just more follow a band through their career. But with TV and with film, you've, you've got this kind of massive network that you want to navigate and you never know where the next node on the network is going to lead to a great show that you're going to love or a great film that, that you're going to love. And so, so that, that's part of the, the, the magic. So I think if IMDb hadn't have started in 1990, somebody else would have created some kind of IMDb thing. And that would be, I wouldn't be in this great magical virtual reality I may be in now. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think... Those were very great questions. Um, they, you know, the other offices have to work, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, have everyone to here off, take the rest of here. the day off. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we can stay here for a bit longer and ask questions. And they might need to ask you what you ask them. So you need to share in the all hands or whatever. What did Cole answer to your question? <laughs> well, thanks to whoever was watching. We saw you. Thanks for coming. It was really fun. And now we get to have the best questions. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. And um, thanks, everybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Am I? Have we? Have we shut down the? Have we shut down the feed or what? How? How's the? Is this off the record? <laughs> nothing, nothing is ever off the record. That's my other top tip. Go, go, David.